What is up, everybody? This is Brian with the Mustard and Mayo or NCMR2 on eBay, and this is just going to be a uh, hopefully fairly quick walking tour, kind of a um, video of my 1987 Toyota MR2 um, that I have listed for sale. Um, so, quick backstory on this car. Um, I have had this car for about nine years now. I think nine and a half years, roughly, give or take. Um, I had a second generation MR2 that unfortunately uh, was totaled in a wreck. I bought it back from insurance, fixed it up, most of the way at least, um, but couldn't really get back into it again um, after it had had all that damage done to it. So I ended up deciding to let that project go, parted the car out, and always wanted to um, switch back into a first gen MR2 since I had had one in the past but had not had a chance to actually do anything with it. It was a parts car that had a 20 valve in it. Um, so I found this car. Um, the fender flares were already on there. However, they were not properly installed for function. They were just there for form. Um, so I bought this car. It had the original uh, blue top for a GE in it, um, which, you know, I put a head gasket on later on. And uh, when that motor got a little bit too tired and old <clears throat> and had a rod knock, that was when I had a donor car of a 1988 MR2 with the 4AGZE. I had this whole entire engine, transmission, and axles swapped in. I do believe without confirmation that the transmission um, with this 4AGZE, it does have the factory limited slip, but obviously after about you know 30 or 35 years, I'm not exactly sure how well that actuates or not. Um, but at least from the driving difference between this and the last transmission, I do feel like there's a difference in grip and how uh, cornering goes. Um, so this motor, the whole entire motor itself as a, as a whole is stock. Um, the only things that have been done um, is there has been an AC delete. So that is completely gone from here. And then you can't really see it from the engine bay. But uh, the supercharger is actually down there near the uh, oil dipstick. Um, I do have a larger crank pulley from Technotoy Tuning. And then some of these electrical wires that you see here with the newer tape on them. This is part of the Grunt Box mod, which basically uh, ties into the cold start injector um, and somehow reads timing or throttle input or something so that when the larger crank pulley is making a little bit more boost at higher RPMs, um, you don't have a lean condition and it takes the <clears throat> cold start injector here um, and just basically uses that to inject a little bit more fuel into the uh, intake um, to try to fix that lean condition. I've never had this car dynoed um, at any point during the before or after the swap or after the pulley mod, but the internet says that should make roughly about 180 horsepower, give or take. I don't know if that's engine or wheel. Everybody always has differences of opinion on that, um, but that is the only modifications to the engine. There's not a whole lot out there for Mark I... Um, MR2 exhaust. Um, so I basically had a local muffler shop uh, weld in some tubes. You can see there is a resonator and a, I believe it's a MagnaFlow muffler just to try to keep the tone and the drone down since there's not a whole lot of pipe under these MR2s. There's some people that have modified Gen 2 uh, MR2 exhaust to work on these, um, but I had not personally dealt with that myself. Um, so I decided just to opt to have something made locally. Um, other than that, all of the 87 and later MR2s um, had the factory uh, intake location here in the trunk. Uh, now this car did not have the original air box when I first got it, um, nor uh, did it have the interior carpet, which seems to be a really difficult thing to find in a first gen a lot of times for some reason. Um, but you can see here, uh, the, the location is the same. I just have a cone filter on here instead of the box, because again, I never had the box to begin with anyway. Um, I don't, I wouldn't consider that a power modification, um, but it does seem to get plenty of fresh air back here. Um, the floor plan, floor pan back here is in pretty good shape. I will point out, this is probably the only spot on the car that I have found any kind of rust, uh, which I have, um, treated a little while back. Let's see how it's kind of holding up. So I think moisture gets in these carpets sometimes. Um, and I don't know if you can tell I've done. A little bit of patchwork and things like that. I've sanded off. There was a couple holes right down here that were starting to form. So I'd sanded off a lot of the 
uh, rust bubbles and uh, basically I think I did some paint on there and then sealant and then use some uh, kind of like flex tape type stuff, uh, gorilla tape, whatever you want to call it to, you know, kind of further keep things from collecting there, I guess. Um, but that's obviously ECU location there as well. Um, so the biggest set of modifications on this car is pretty much on the body suspension and brakes. I am not sure on the exact branding on the flares as again, they were on the car when I first got it. Um, I do believe that they are, if they're not ZG flares, um, then they are definitely a really close imitation of them or somebody just did a really good job of matching them up. Um, but they are staggered flares. If you look at the front flares, I don't know how these are measured in three or four inches or if it's the length or how much they stick out, but you can definitely tell from looking at it, there is a little bit more of a uh, deeper flare in the rear. You can see just back there how much thicker they are versus up here where it's a little bit more tapered. Um, so the rear flares do have a little bit more space to them. Again, the previous owner had just taken like house screws and drilled them right into the fenders. Um, and even with the original, uh, I think they were like 25 millimeter offset wheels and tires. Um, the original wheels and tires, which were a 205 square setup, so it was a little weird to drive. Um, they rubbed like crazy everywhere all the time. And it had kind of a janky lowering suspension setup. So the current setup is, um, I, the holes are already drilled in all the fenders. So the fenders I knew were never going to be perfect, minus somebody reversing the body work and trying to undo that. So I have actually completely trimmed out um, both the front and rear fenders uh, within about a half inch of where the holes are. I'll see if I can get up in the fenders here because I know somebody's going to want to see. So I don't know if this is good enough to see, but the um, obviously the rear has two layers of uh, sheet metal. Uh, both have been trimmed to allow for the tire fitment, which you can see is not a problem now. Front fenders are just a single layer of sheet metal on the fender here so very easy to trim um that was a more recent trim just because as i got a little bit more aggressive tires on the car um, i did not want to risk having any rubbing issues if there was any you know bumps or cavities in the road um, that would cause that i had them flared a little bit but just for uh safekeeping of the tires i decided to go ahead and uh, trim these fronts out also basically just trimmed about right here up and then back down. Um, so that is a thing. If you're looking for a perfect bodied, you know, original sheet metal uh, car, um, this is not gonna be it. But if you like the fitment and the functionality, um, these are a 205 50 front and a 225 50 on the rear. All of them are, that's the newer, um, the BFG Rival. Um, I think this is the 1.5S if I'm not mistaken. Um, both uh, sets of tires were replaced um, about early to mid last year and maybe only have, I don't know, maybe five to 10,000 miles on them. I don't really drive this car a whole lot over the last uh, course of time as I've picked up other project cars and things like that. Um, these are Rota Grid V wheels. Um, I've always liked that look on the MR2s. Um, I just think it's good. Again, they've got zero offset. There's no uh, wheel spacers or anything like that. Um, but I just, I think they work well. Um, that was really the main reason why I wanted to have a car with the flares on it is so I could actually fit these larger tires. And I will say it actually fits and tucks up into the fender. Well, there's no stance or crazy fitment here, but it definitely, I've seen, I've uh, been behind this car. It definitely gives it a bit of a, almost like a Mario Kart esque, uh, stance, like a bulldog stance, uh, with the way the wheels and tires fit, but it's, it's definitely, uh, a look for sure. Um, so with that, there are BC coilovers in there. Um, I don't know if anybody had picked it up when the engine lid was up, but here's the, uh, the dampening adjustment there on the top plates. It's the same for all four corners. Um, brakes have been upgraded. You can see here on the front, there's power slot rotors, if I'm not mistaken, on the brand. And then if you can kind of see in there, I have EBC yellow pads up front. I think I did the same rotors. Yes, so I have the same power slot rotors in the rear. And uh, same EBC pad set up all around. Um, those were done probably maybe a year before the tires. So again, they haven't been driven on a whole lot. This isn't like a serious autocross car. It's kind of more like a special car for mountain driving and taking to car shows. Um, but that's the suspension setup. There are underneath of the car, I have replaced most, if not all, of the 
funky MR2 tow rods, tie rods, whatever you want to call them. You can see there's one right there. Um, you can see there's, it's like a literally a steering rod like you'd have on a power steering rack up front, but they just stuck it in the back. Um, so that's got a new outer tie rod in. There's the inner tie rod, and you can see they are adjustable. I believe the original factory ones were fixed, potentially, um, if I'm not mistaken. So that does allow you to adjust suspension more on alignments. Um, but that's the same on the front and the rear. All of the bushings, ball joints, any of those moving components have been replaced over the years. Uh, to include the uh, bushing for the steering rack has been replaced. I don't know what you can see under here. I still have the factory sway bars underneath of here but i do have if you can see here i have the um, upgraded end links in there uh with the factory sway bar um so i've tried to just make sure anything that could wear out over time here um has been taken care of um a couple other weird little things that i've done just kind of little supporting mods that i like from some of the companies that exist on these mr2s is um the brake master cylinder brace up here i believe that was a techno toy tuning piece if i'm not mistaken or maybe something i picked up from twos rs um, but these mr2s and a lot of older cars really have a tendency to have the firewall flex uh, when you are under hard braking uh, which just gives you kind of like a spongy brake feel so this ties everything together with the front firewall if you will um, to basically just tighten up the brake feel um, the Carfax does show, I have never had this car in an accident or it's never been wrecked. The Carfax does show that there was, uh, I think there was like somebody ran into a fence or something like that. And it was repaired pretty well, but I will point out that right here on, I guess you would consider this like the radiator support or something. You can see, um, how it should be. And this is how it is. So you can see evidence of repair, um, but it's been, you know, kind of hammered out and smashed out. Everything's still connected and, and works correctly. Headlights function. I've actually over time replaced both of the headlight motors uh, with other units. That's just something that happens with older cars. They'll tend to die or get lazy or something. Um, you can see that the headlights have been upgraded uh, to LEDs and uh, it's a pretty generic set that has really good reviews from Amazon. There's a lot of these that you can kind of choose through and pick. Um, but it's a glass. Oh, no, I thought these were glass. I've got glass ones before. So these are plastic, but they are LEDs. They're not the HID, so they're not going to get hot and melt things. Um, but those are in there. They do have a, technically they have a high and low beam functionality. Um, that was the high beam on. And this is just the low beam. It's just a matter of how many lights shine. Nothing super complex there. Um, I do have, and I can include this. I don't have any issues with letting it go. Um, I've got three mrs wheels one of them i just kept and put up in the front here uh, it's the same bolt pattern as these and it's got a halfway decent tire on there so i kept it up here as kind of like a show wheel um for i don't know car shows or whatever uh, but i've got two more of these uh one more front wheel and one more back wheel or maybe it's two backs and one front but either way i can include all three of those if somebody wants or none of them if for some reason somebody doesn't want that it's the original spare tire cover you can see the um Relay here. I didn't want to drill into the body here. So I just basically secured it here uh, The fuse everything's tied back into the switch assembly um, into the fuse box for power Again, there's the BC coilovers up here um, for the uh, adjustments for camber and of course the uh, Valving Let me go ahead and close this up We'll do a kind of a quick walk around the body and I'll try to point out um, any of the imperfections so I have never repainted this car. Again, I've never had any body work done to this car. However, and the paint looks really good. It's actually not been polished in a long time. Um, that's something I probably will do before it goes home, unless somebody wants me to just leave it like it is. But ah, here's a good spot. So this car has definitely been repainted. It's, it's still the same color that it was from the factory, as evident from the door jams and everything there. Um, it's the super red color. But there are some instances, like right here, you can see there's a little bit of paint starting to peel. Um, it's always the edges on these subpar paint jobs. There is, if you really get into it, like right here, and some of this possibly could still be cleaned up. I've never really bothered with it. You can see just not so great tape lines here. Um, outside of a couple like prep work items, the paint is actually held up well over time. I'm sure if I were to get into this, I could find, you know, I'm sure there's a spot of orange peel or something somewhere. 
I would not call it a show quality um, paint finish, but as a lot of these MR2s age, the original paint, this red is a normally a single stage color and it gets super faded. Um, so this paint, considering I've had this car for nine years and I have no clue when it was actually repainted before me, I think the paint's actually held up pretty well. Um, but I'll go ahead and point out anything. Um, so there's a couple little scratches right here on the um, door sill or the uh, factory side skirt. This is uh, OEM to the car. Um, this factory piece here, you can see it's solid. Everything's there, all, all the pieces front and rear are present. Um, there was at some point, I think this was prior to me fixing the fender flares and trimming things out. You can see there's a little bit of warping right here. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this was from before I had the fender flare set up correctly with the wheels and tires. So there was a little bit of tire and fender contact. Um, and I think it just buckled that at some point. Um, a while back, I was smooth that out a little bit, but you can definitely see that's probably the biggest body work um, damage that's there. I'm not a professional detailer, but there is some sort of light hazing. Like, I don't know if something sat here at some point, like a bike rack is all I can figure. I've never put a bike rack on this trunk, but if you look, there's this little hazing fading, which maybe if somebody knows what they're doing with a polishing uh, compound or something, that may come out just fine. Um, this uh, engine lid, of course, the supercharged engine lids have these raised areas. And you really kind of have to have this engine lid because it clears the intercooler. You can see where it lines up here. Um, this engine lid, as well as the roll bar that's in this car, came from the same car that the um, engine was. Um, I believe that car was a wrecked car on the front end. So I was able to get the same engine lid. The roll bar came out of it as well. It's the same color. You can see whoever painted the car did a really good job paint matching things. Um, but obviously this one being original, this is what usually happens with these. It's a fiberglass piece or some sort of ABS resin, plastic, something, and clear coat's definitely coming off. And as the more you wash it, the less clear coat there is. So um, that's one thing that if somebody wants to make it look great, uh, would be to have that painted. Uh, it's something I was gonna do at some point, but I just figured when it was time to sell the car, I would just leave it like it is. Um, I did replace, there's a lot of little OEM stuff that I've replaced recently just to try to get the car right, and that would be C-pillar trim. This is the reproduction C-pillar trim that you can buy from Twos R Us, and I forget the company that actually makes them, um, but this does have the uh, gasket that goes around it, as well as all the new hardware. Um, so it actually fit pretty well. I was pretty impressed with um, with that, because I know this reproduction stuff can sometimes not fit perfectly, uh, but I've been pretty happy with that. Um, I do not any longer have, I used to have the Toyota visor that would go here, uh, but when my C-pillar trim broke, it actually cracked and broke the tabs on the visor at the same time, because it happened when I was driving naturally, all this plastic gets old and dry rotted. Um, so I ended up chucking those, I think, I might still have them in storage, but I can't seem to find them. Um, over the years now. I did also all MR2s and I feel like T-top cars in general uh, tend to have issues with the T-top seals leaking and I'm not going to pretend like these are perfectly sealed up now because I just don't think you'll ever get it right um, but this does have new OEM uh, T-top seals. You can see they go the whole length of the door as well as the area around and of course all the way down here as well. So these are brand new. I've actually only had these on for maybe a few months and there is actually a piece that goes underneath of the glass here. Um, that is the only piece that I don't think you can buy um, just because I don't think anybody's made it or there's not a reproduction kit and Toyota has uh, stopped supporting that. So um, all of the main gaskets been replaced. I feel like if this gasket could be replaced, you can see a little bit of the dry rot from just the rubber over the years. I feel like if these gaskets were replaced, which I have done in a second gen MR2, I think it would seal things up perfectly but it definitely fits a lot tighter. Um, there's hardly a gap there like it used to be before these are all pushed out and swayed out. Um, I also replaced, I think it was both, but I replaced the plastic pieces that go inside here because they were rattling like crazy. Um, and I forget if they were new or reproduction or, or what, um, but I replaced, I believe, both of these here because they were starting to rattle in the car and it was really kind of annoying. Oh, on the front, I said this is gonna be a short video, but on the front, um, these are the OEM eyelids. Um, this is just a body molding that just, I don't know why Toyota did this, but they had this little cutout here. I think it was originally supposed to be there. So if there was any problems with headlight operation, um, that it had something that was kind of rubbery to catch on. So it didn't tear up the body. I don't know. 
But these things always get broken and go missing. They are originally, I'm pretty sure, supposed to be body colored with the car. Um, these are obviously not. These are the brand new Toyota ones that you can still buy. They are installed. Obviously, if somebody wants to paint them, they can. But at least they're there, so they fill the gap. And there's not that weird little bracket behind there. Um, the lenses on the front, which are normally orange or amber, have been swapped for uh, clear. I'm sure if I look up here on the front, there's bound to be... Yeah, so there's a couple like rock chips and imperfections in the paint. The front lip, which is bad to uh, tear apart on these because this is that same kind of rubberized stuff as a lot of the body panels, is actually held up pretty well. Um, these brackets in the middle always seem to wear out over time, and this one definitely has. Everything's still held together, but there's definitely a little bit of a cosmetic flaw in this department here. Um, everything lines up pretty well. This uh, rubber bumper here has gotten a little bit deformed over time, so it doesn't fit as tightly as on the other side. And there's a little bit of a crack here underneath here. Hardly noticeable, but as a lot of these rubber bumpers age, that's just kind of what happens here is they deform. So maybe there's a, a fix for getting that perfectly lined up, but it's there regardless. Ugh, factory uh, badge here, still in good shape. Uh, wipers and everything there work. I'm trying to go around the body to see if there's anything major that I've missed. Again, I'm sure if I get in here, I can find little little dortings and pecks here and there, which I mentioned in my ad. Um, there's a maybe a walnut or something ding here. Same here on the hood. There's always just tiny little dents somewhere on the car from who knows what over years. Um, there's a little bit of a crease or something here on the front hood that's that and that that little dent on the back might be the most egregious um dense dings on the car uh, but overall again as you can see body is in really good shape um everything except for the flares is oem on the outside um i'm sure i've missed a couple things mechanically inside and underneath of it but i figured i'd go ahead and look at the inside of the car now so i did replace um i've had a Cobra uh, racing seat in the car just because I like the grip from those when you're mountain driving um, and they look cool but there's the Cobra seat back in there um, that could be included if somebody wants to buy that seat but I figured most people that seat has a fixed bracket that you have to drill holes into to readjust the seat it does not have a slider to it so I figured I would add the factory OEM seats back in that way they do have all the sliding um, and obviously reclining capabilities even though you have the roll bar in here, it actually does clear the seat pretty well. You can see it's not in the way of the head. It actually fits really nicely. All right, so I have had a lot of questions and interest in the center console before. Um, so I've had the center console for many years now. I actually traded with an old car buddy of mine. We used to both have A86s and we traded parts back and forth all the time. He had picked this up from someone that used to be on the MR2 forums back in the day. And I guess uh, the story goes, there was a group buy um, where somebody was going to uh, press and make a bunch of these um, uh, center consoles in carbon fiber. It's not a wrap or anything like that. Um, but I guess the project never really got off the ground and this was one of the original molds from that. And uh, so this is practically a one-off piece. I don't think you're gonna find any other car with this. There might be one sitting somewhere in a warehouse or something, you know, I think it was just a personal project somebody did, but um, it's pretty good. Obviously it shows a little bit of age on the um, clear coat just from it, you know, being in my possession for years, um, but really cool piece. Um, I did actually put some foam insulation underneath of here to uh, try to keep from any more stress cracking, thing like, things like that. Um, I was able to maintain the function of the center storage box here, which is probably a cassette tape box back in the day, um, without having to cut or trim anything with the roll bar, um, cause it just looked weird without it. And I liked having the storage. So I just took the lid off, which I may still have somewhere, but, um, that is still functional. We have a grip Royal steering wheel here as, as obvious here. Now we've got, it's like a it's been on the car since I've had it. It's basically like an energy knockoff, but you do have the um, quick disconnect hub here, which seems to work well. Um, it's tight, grip roll, steering wheel is still in good shape. We've got the TRD shifter with the actual shift ball, as well as the shift lever underneath of here, which I obviously don't want to drill into the carbon fiber, but uh, we have that. There's also, I believe, the drop plate kit, or at least the new bushing kit that you can get for these um, that is in here. 
Um, I have upgraded the radio to include Bluetooth. Um, the stereos in these MR2s suck, and there's not much you can do with the car being as small as it is. Um, but there are four inch kicker speakers that are in the uh, dashboard now. Uh, I mentioned that the speedometer does not work because I don't know why it was working when the swap was done. And then I actually watched the cable uh, go from working to not working um, when I was driving it like maybe two months later. Um, I've replaced the cable. I've put a new uh, speed gear in on the transmission and I just haven't played with it long enough to figure out what's going on there. So that's not working and it was a lot easier and faster just to grab one of these digital speedometers, um, which works off of GPS. You can see I just have it basically plugged in USB off the stereo, so it constantly has power. And honestly, it's really quick to um, start telling you speed once you're going, and I've checked it with other apps. It seems to be pretty accurate. Um, these center trim pieces here, this garnish trim here, they always have broken tabs here. Um, and unless you can find another good piece, um, that's just what they do, unfortunately. Um, I have at one point, I had used some duct tape to hold this together. I had not, I actually just forgot that I was supposed to get the rest of this stuff off. Um, so at least you're seeing it like it is now. Um, but I can reattach that if somebody wants to, or I can get the rest of that glue off with some goo gone or something. I have no problem with that either way. Um, looking again at other stuff in the interior, there is, the dash is in really good shape. There's hardly any bubbling, but there are cracks right here in the center in the easy spot. There's a larger one right here in the center. You can see right beneath my phone mount. And then there's a smaller one here and here. Um, that's the only cracks on the dashboard. There's a little bit of indentations or cracks here. Uh, glove boxes here, albeit a little bit loose with the age and time on how these things work. I might just need to tighten it up again, but there, it attaches here. Um, some of this stuff is the stuff that I'm not a huge fan of with these first gen MR2s. I've had a second gen MR2 in the past and you could tell they definitely worked out the kinks on the design work on stuff like this that doesn't just break as easily. Um, oh, there's a screw that just popped out of that. Nice. So I'll be the first to say that, uh, some of the stuff like the loose, uh, glove box here, which is a pretty common problem as well as this is a super common issue with these, um, not being able to get the center t-top seal stuff like that is probably the only thing that i'm you know looking forward to not having a first gen mr2 again i've got a lot of older toyotas in my fleet um but getting it's getting a little bit harder to find parts for these um and so that's kind of a lot of the reason why i've just not wanted to drive this thing so much um but uh over here looking at the door cards we do have the manual crank everything crank windows manual locks on this and you can see the door cards are in pretty good shape there's a little bit of wear from the glue on the back of this um, and a little bit of separation here, but the door card itself is actually in pretty good shape for the most part. You can see a little bit of cracking on the, the grab handle here, but both grab handles are present. And the driver's side door panel is actually surprisingly almost uh, probably in, in better shape than the passenger one, actually, now that I'm looking at it. Kind of a funny thing. Um, anything else that I would note in here? There is a small chip here, a rock chip that's never spread. You can kind of see it around my finger. Let's see if I can zoom in. So there's a rock chip that's been here for a long time. Um, other than that, this is the original windshield as far as I know. Um, there is a plastic piece missing on the interior trim here between the uh, A-pillar and the uh, sunroof there. You can see there's just a gap there will be a plastic piece. Um, those are easily replaced. I just hadn't picked it up yet, but it should normally look like this here. Um, other than that, the interior is actually pretty good shape, pretty complete. Um, handbrake and everything works. Everything's tight there like it should be. I'll go ahead and point out with the keys. Um, it's little stuff like this that I like, and I work at a Toyota dealership, so it makes things easier. Um, but I do actually have a really cool MR2 keychain for the nerds like me. But I also have an OEM uh, Toyota key. Uh, you can see it's got the, the rubberized blank, and I'm pretty sure I actually have one, if not two, spares that don't have the insulated piece, but they still have the Toyota branding. I like stuff like that when it comes to my older cars. Um, and let me see if there's anything else major about the outside or mechanical, and I will go ahead and crank it up. Oh! So I did replace, these are MR2 floor mats from Twos R Us, the reproduction floor mats. Those are in there on both sides. I've had people ask me about these pedals before. Um, those are pedals that were in this car when I got it. Um, so I cannot confirm or deny, but those do look to me like the Celica GTS or 
MRS pedals. Uh, I say that because I have a Celica GTS and they look the same, uh, where you can actually swap out the pedals. And I think there's a way you can modify the, the gas pedal assembly. And I guess the previous owner to me uh, never did that. Um, but a couple things there. And I guess the right thing to do would be to go ahead and crank this thing up. So let me open up the garage door and we'll go from there. All right, the garage door is open. Let's go ahead and crank this thing up. Brody exhaust. There are blue LEDs. Uh, they've been in the car since I got it. There are blue LEDs back behind here. If I'm not mistaken, I think every now and then one of them will flicker like it'll just go off and on but it doesn't flash um, generally they all work I did actually replace um, this uh, headlight switch at one point and went through and got the replacement one and cleaned it all up because these are bad for going uh, bad because the dimmers will go bad and they will cause all of the instrument lights to go out so that's been done you can see the radio here so on and so forth there Again, speakers there. See the headlights. I will give this a few minutes to get warmed up and then I will go ahead and do some revs. Oh, while it's here, I'll go ahead and talk about um, the engine itself while it's running, if, if you can hear me, I hope you can. Um, I've worked on this thing a lot myself. I've had an MR2 mechanic. I worked at Toyota. I've had a couple people there work on it as well. Um, this thing, until it started to spring a recent uh, coolant leak from somewhere, which I think is a tube or a hose that's right in this area, um, this has not had any leaks or problems with the engine. I've had to go through and just kind of update things like wiring. I had an oxygen sensor wire that shorted, and so we had to remove that wiring and replace that. Um, but the engine itself is actually bone dry with the exception of the coolant leak, which is a newer thing that I just have not had a chance to fully diagnose and figure out what's going on. It obviously runs okay, and it really won't even do any kind of leaking at all until it's really hot and under pressure, and then it will just drip um, every, now, every now and then from over there. So it's something that I would monitor. It's something that I could talk to the owner with, the next owner, and uh, see if that's something they'd want to negotiate. Um, getting repaired, uh, maybe we split the cost or I you know, get employee rate at my dealership or something like that. Um, you can see there's no smoke. Probably should have pointed that out when I first cranked it, but I've never had problems with black smoke, white smoke, blue smoke, any of that. Uh, when this engine was installed into the car, compression test was done and uh, it was really, really good. The mileage on this engine is, I think, fairly close to mileage on the car. There's a sticker here where the timing belt was done at 204,000 miles in 2009. So for those that believe it needs to be done, um, it probably could be done again, but I've not had any issues with it. I looked at the belt one time and it looked fine because um, I don't think it really ran much after that. Um, but if somebody wants to do that for preventive maintenance, have at it. Um, but the engine actually has really good power, pulls really well. So like I said, I'll go ahead and let this uh, continue to warm up and then I'll rev it just a little bit. 
All right, I actually just started to hear the uh, idle speed start to come down. Um, and I just checked the temp gauge on the uh, on the dashboard here is looking pretty good as well. So I think we finally got to the warm up stage. I think I mentioned it earlier, but I'll bring up again. This car does not have any air conditioning. The compressor I may have, I'm not sure if it's the one for this car. Um, I would just consider it not being there. You're welcome to have the part if we think it's the right one for this car, um, but it's not there. You'd have to get the bracket, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, the belt for that. Um, and I cannot remember if the AC condenser is still up front, but anywho, I figured I'd point that out. Uh, fans and everything do still work, so you can have air conditioning, but anywho. It's a little bit later at night time, so I don't wanna rev this too much, but. have anybody to rev it for me but I don't want to rev it too much at night time these uh, supercharged Toyota engines are extremely interesting because the supercharger works much like an AC compressor where it has a magnetic coil so the supercharger is on or off it's not a variable it's not anything like that um, so you don't really hear any supercharger whine i was starting to get supercharger whine and that's not normal for these so i ended up having a bad idler pulley down there from the original crank pulley kit so i actually uh the technical toy tuning actually did me a solid and gave me a new idler pulley down here and a new belt i actually still have the rest of the kit that they included pardon the mess here here is the original center console by the way here is the original MR2 steering wheel, uh, which I'm obviously including. And then this is the uh, belt that they supplied, which my belt was still in really good shape. So I decided to keep it and put this with the, the next owner. This was the idler pulley that was replaced. The bearing was making noise. This is a new crank pulley. If somebody wants to keep this or sell that, you can see techno toy tuning on there. Um, so that's all coming with. As far as anything else I have as well, here's a white line. I believe this is a front sway bar. Um, that's brand new. It was actually gifted to me. I just never really needed it since these MR2s are pretty stiff as they are. Um, but all that can go. But yeah, that wine went away. So it's actually really quiet. I was going to say that the power delivery is interesting because it really only kicks a supercharger on at a specific RPM. And I think it's like right around like 35 or 3600 RPMs. And it's very similar very similar to VTEC in the fact that it just, it clicks, the power comes on and it pulls all the way to red line. So it's actually a really interesting uh, power delivery on that. Um, so if you've not driven one, it's definitely a unique experience, but it's definitely a torquey little car. Um, if it weren't dark, I, um, I would go take it for a drive. So I may do that tomorrow when it's daylight and just have a separate video for that. But I at least wanted to go ahead and get this video up because um, I know that the Market's really gone crazy for these MR2s, so I want to make sure I am, um, you know, not only getting the most value out of this car as I think it should get, um, given its condition and the parts that it has, um, but I also want to be fair to the next owner and make sure that I'm being transparent with anything and everything that I know about the car right now. Um, so if anybody has further questions about the car, about the history, about any of the parts that are on it, um, I'm pretty sure I got everything listed in the actual eBay listing. Um, but again, there's just always little things that I'm sure that I'm forgetting, you know, stuff that I've just replaced little clips that I've done. Like I almost forgot that I had the shift kit in there, the, uh, TRD shift kit. Uh, that was actually also from the parts car that had this, uh, roll bar and the engine and everything. So kind of cool how many parts came over. Actually that seat over there, that Cobra seat back over there was also from the same parts car. So it's nice that there's a little bit of uh, heritage from some other, uh, forgotten MR2s that's lived on in this car. Um, I have loved this car. Everybody here has known me as the uh, Brian, the MR2 guy. I actually have business cards at work um, with this car on it. And I've been really wanting for a long time to print some photos uh, to add to my garage collection from going to the Tale of Drag and stuff like that. But the reality of the situation for me with this car is I have had it for a long time. I've had this car and my 82 Celica for the longest amount of time. And since these cars are now starting to become uh, somewhat collector's items, you know, not that long ago, they were, you know, three to $5,000 cars and that was about it. But since they've kind of become uh, really sought after cars, uh, I just got really nervous kind of driving it and beating on it with just being an older car with no AC 
it just wasn't a daily driver. I've got a 2000 Celica for daily driver. I recently picked up this M3. I've got a forerunner out there that needs an engine. I have the 82 Celica is kind of like my fun older Toyota, a 92 Previa. So I have a lot of Toyotas and a lot of things to keep me busy. And I just find that I'm not driving this car that often. Um, and so I just think it's time for me to go ahead and let this car go. I think if I ever get back into MR2s again, I really had a lot of fun with this car, but I'll probably do something a little bit more modern, like a Mark III with a uh, 2ZZ swap, like the engine that's in the Celica here, or potentially another Mark II. I used to have a really nice Mark II before this car uh, that had a beam swap. So I might go for a, another Mark II at some point with a 2GR in it, just to get a little bit of that modern technology in there and not have to worry with turbos and all that kind of stuff. But um, I'm gonna be, Really sad to see this car go, but I'm also looking forward to like the next chapter and, and also freeing, freeing one more car from my collection as I have way too many as it is. Um, so I'm hoping this car goes to somebody that can appreciate it and enjoy the mountain driving aspects of it. Um, I look forward to seeing you know what somebody does to personalize it. I know not everybody likes the, the rep wheel, so I'll be curious to see if this becomes a show car, stance car. Uh, somebody wants to convert it to a daily driver, I don't know. Um, if somebody wants to use it for parts on theirs, I have no clue what will happen with this car. But um, I'm very curious to see what happens. I know this video has ended up being a lot longer than expected, <laughs> as usual, uh, with any of my YouTube videos when it comes to this stuff. But I hope that I've done a good enough job uh, covering everything that I wanted to talk about on this car. And uh, as always, if there are any questions, uh, anybody's welcome to reach out in the comments or message me through eBay. Um, or if you can find me on Instagram, I need to get some stickers for that at some point. But my Instagram is uh, mountain underscore motoring. Um, so you can message me there or Facebook or whatever form of communication there is. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for watching. And uh, thanks so much for checking out my car.